What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we gotta pull the tranny out of the green truck to fix something that has just a little minor issue. It's been popping out of first gear. It's only done it like five, six times maybe, but I wanna get this figured out before I sell the truck. So that's the only issue I've had really at all in the runability and how it drives. Really actually driving very nice. Just popping out of first gear every once in a while. It's not that often, but I wanna get it fixed. So we gotta drop the tranny out of the truck and go through it. And I believe it's a bearing in on the main shaft from what I've read. There's been a few people that have had the same problem. They pulled the tranny apart and one of the bearings on the main shaft was a little bit loose and just moving around a little bit, I think somehow pushes it out of first gear. So we're gonna get started ripping this thing out. Really not too bad. These trucks are very easy to work on. These trannies come out pretty quick. So the only issue is I'm gonna have to have my neighbor or a buddy come over, help me drop this thing out. But let's get started. We'll get the drive lines off, get the starter off, get all the bell housing bolts and shifters. And that's really about it. Pretty easy to pull out. So let's get to it. All right guys, we got the tranny ready to come out other than a couple bolts on the cross member, but I couldn't get anybody over to help me. So I went and picked up the old Harbor Freight tranny jack and we're gonna see if we can get this out by myself. So we'll swap that jack out for the new one. I'm just gonna use a tie strap over the tranny, strap it to the jack and it should come out pretty easy. I might have to pull that cross member off, but the tranny jack is definitely gonna help. So let's get after it, see if we can get this thing out. All right, we got the tranny out. Um, makes it a lot easier using this tranny jack. You don't have to hold the whole tranny on just that little mount that's on the uh, regular floor jack. So strap it on and it's on there pretty good. So it works out really nice and easy. So now what I wanna do is pressure wash it before I start taking it apart 
just because there's so much dirt and grease on here. I actually have never even pulled this tranny, so that's why it's so dirty. So now is a good opportunity to get it all cleaned up and looking a lot better. So we're gonna pressure wash it and then we can start digging into it. You guys are gonna be learning this with me. I have never taken apart one of these trannies. I've dug into a few other trannies, but never a Toyota. Hopefully it goes smooth. I'm pretty sure we can just pull the transfer case off, pull the bell housing, and then there's that main plate inside the bell housing that holds the front of the shafts and then unbolt all these bolts around the center and both case halves slide off and all the gears and shafts are through this center plate here. So I think that's how it works, but we gotta figure it out. So we're gonna get this thing cleaned up and see what we can do. All right, after a lot of scrubbing, this thing cleaned up pretty well. There's still some spots that uh, could use a little bit more, but not a big deal. I'm not trying to make it look brand new. I just don't want to crack it open and get a bunch of dirt inside. So let's tear it apart and see what we can do. All right, so looking at the back of the tranny, there's nothing, no shaft at all coming out the back. So we shouldn't have to take anything off back there. Looks like you can see there's this circlip or the little locker in here and on each of these bearings. So in order to get these shafts out of the case, we're gonna have to pull these two clips off and then, I'm not 100% sure, but we may have to pull this bolt here for this shift shaft here. I'm not sure, yeah, that's bolted on, so we're gonna have to pull that off. And then we should be able to just split these cases. So let's give it a go, see what we can do. All right, we got this thing apart. So a lot of these bearings actually feel pretty good. There's a little bit of play, but that is fairly normal. There just shouldn't be any up and down play. There is the main bearing that's going from this main shaft through this plate here. And you can see there's quite a bit of movement. I know that that's fairly normal, especially with such a long leverage piece on there, but I don't know. It feels like it's pretty loose. So. 
I don't know what else would really cause it to pop out of first gear. The synchros only help it engage into gear. The synchros have nothing to do once it's in gear. They don't hold it in gear at all. What really holds it in gear are these little, there's a little ball and spring under these caps here that you can see right there. There's a little cutout and it locks into that notch. But what I was reading was when people are having this issue is when these bearings get loose and the main shaft is moving around a little bit, it'll actually kick it out of gear. So I don't know, I think my best bet right now is to get this thing stripped down and check this main bearing back here. I don't really know exactly what to do, but I think I'm gonna clamp it in the vise on this main plate. We'll have to get these shift forks and rods out first. And then looks like there's the bearing retainer here bolted in. And then I don't really know. We got to just mess around with it. I think we got to pull. This is the reverse gear. We'll pull that off. And then we'll just screw around with it until we get it apart. Like I said, I've never been in these before. I really don't know how they come apart, but I'll figure it out. And another thing, just when you pull parts off, either label them and put them back together. Like when I pull these shift forks out, I'm going to label them and, you know, kind of put the forks back onto the rods. And then also take pictures as you go. I'm gonna take some pictures right now when it's fully assembled. And as I take things apart, I'll take pictures just so I have a reference on how it'll go back together. All right, we got all the shift forks and rods out. So in between each of these rods, there's a detent ball. So that's why you saw me putting these uh, rags in there just to keep them in place. That way, when I put the shift rods back in, I just push the towel out and everything stays in place. And then also on one of these right there, that bottom one, you can see that hole right there, there was, this little short pin, if you can see in the bag there, there's that little short pin. Two of these shift rods have that. So that one has it and then uh, this reverse shift rod has one as well right there. So just be aware of that, those will fall out. So I guess the next thing we gotta do is get these shafts out. 
I assume we'll probably have to pull this nut off of this to pull these gears off in order to get that shaft out of the housing. And then another thing I just found out, Marlin Crawler sells a new rear plate here, the center plate, because these wear out. These bearings wear into the shaft here. Let's see if I can get it to move. As you can see that. The bearings got play, quite a bit of play, really. And that puts everything out of whack with the whole shifting assembly because it's all locked in here. And if this whole shaft is moving back and forth when you're trying to shift it, I'd imagine it's probably not even going into gear all the way. So that might be the only issue we really have. I don't think there's supposed to be any play with this bearing and this retaining plate here. I think this plate's really supposed to hold that bearing in place and there shouldn't be any play. So I think I'm gonna buy that plate they actually sell a heavy duty one that's a lot more beefy than that. And then the whole bearing kit, so bearing here, there's a bearing inside of here, there's that bearing, that bearing, and then the bearing right here. So we gotta do a little bit of work. We gotta get this main nut off. I'm not sure how I'm gonna hold the shaft from turning, but you can see it's staked in right there. And then I also gotta find some torque specs for this thing. I gotta find torque specs for these bolts here for that main nut. And then another hard part we're gonna have to deal with is pressing gears on and off. We gotta press this bearing off, this gear off in order to get that bearing off. And then I'm not sure if these bearings or these uh, gears here are pressed onto that shaft, but we gotta figure it out and we gotta make it happen. So I bought a this big separator or this big bearing clamp here so we can use that in the press and then we could also use that with a like a uh, three or two arm puller say we could put that plate behind this bearing here and pull it off that way if we can't get the whole assembly in the press but we got to get the shafts out of the main plate first so let's see what we can do
There we go, we got the shafts out of this main center plate. So these bearings and gears that were pressed on here, really not that tight of a press. They came off very easy. The next challenge is gonna be trying to get something behind this bearing and this gear. We gotta press this gear off and pull this bearing off. Also, this one's pretty tight in there too. I'm not sure what we're gonna have to use to get behind these bearings. This big one on the front should be no big deal with that. I was thinking for this one here, we might have to use this and just press off this gear and press the gear bearing and a gear off. But if it's a tight press on each of those gears and bearing, that's gonna be a nightmare. So we'll figure that out. I gotta go inside, order up a bearing kit and this retaining plate for the back. And once we get that in, we can swap this stuff out. So I get this question all the time on the channel, how I learn to do all the stuff I do. This is how I learned. Like I said, I've never been into one of these trannies, never had one apart, but with enough care and paying attention to what you're doing, you can do just about anything. There is some specific stuff you need to know, like torque specs, say if you're rebuilding the motor, you gotta know like bearing clearances and all that. But with enough care, you can just about do anything with common sense, just taking it apart, figuring out how everything works, and then you can get it back together. So that is how I learned. I just dive into it and I figure it out. All right guys, while we're waiting for the bearings to show up, I wanna get some of the stuff cleaned up. So these shafts for the shift forks, we're gonna use some scotch Bright, get these in the parts washer tank and clean these up so the shift forks move real nice and free on there. When I was pulling them out, they're a little sticky, so we wanna get those cleaned up. Um, I wanna get these interlocks out. And I'm sure it's nothing special, it's basically just a little pin in between each one of these, but I just didn't wanna lose them. So we'll pull those out, get that plate cleaned up. So this is what they are. So you can see the top two are a little bit longer and then the bottom one is just basically a ball bearing. So you can see here, this one, these top two have more of a gap than that lower one. So just be aware, make sure you get those back in the right order and you should be good to go. I got this stuff all cleaned up. So one thing I'm gonna do in order to reassemble this tranny is I'm gonna put these back in and stuff these holes with towels just so I know they're in the right spot. And all I gotta do when I put the shift rods in is just push the towel out and these are exactly where they're supposed to be. There's no fiddling around with it, trying to drop them in as you're putting the rods in. So I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, gear oil on those, get them in place. And then, like I said, just stuff each cavity with a little bit of a towel to keep it in place. All right, I wanna get a start on pressing these bearings off. So I wanna start with the input shaft. This just slides right off the main shaft here. If you can get the, uh, get it off of there. There's a bearing inside of there, right there. And then you can pull the synchro off just like that. And then there's a clip right there holding the bearing on. So 
This is probably one of the easiest bearings that I'll have to get off. So that's what I kind of want to start with. See how tight of a press this is. And it shouldn't be a big deal to get this up in the press and get a one of these on it. I actually got another smaller one. But I'll probably use that bigger one there. Clamp it around the bearing. Throw it in the press and it should come right out. So let's bust this clip off. Get it in the press. Get this bearing off. And then we will tackle this one and see what we can do to get this off. All right, that bearing came off real easy, no issues at all. So now we're gonna work on this one. So I'm gonna take a rag and just tape it around all this other gear set just to make sure none of these shift collars or anything come out of place because there's actually little pins or little uh, plates underneath that shift collar that if that comes off and you lose those, you have to buy some more and I don't wanna do that. So tape a rag around it. And then like I said, I'm gonna try to pull this gear off first Hopefully it's not too tight of a press. We also have to uh, figure out something to set this on in the press because this is too big to fit in between that main beam on the press. So we're gonna have to get some blocks and block it way up in order to clear that beam. And then we can take that same clamp, clamp it around this gear, and hopefully we can get that gear off with not much problem. Well, I got this thing cranked down and I can't get this gear to budge and I don't want to force it too much on this one gear just because this polar here or the separator is right on the edge of the gear and I really don't want to shatter that thing. So what I think I'm going to do is somehow get this thing set up in the press and press from this big gear be behind here because this plate will fit nicely behind there, really secure and it should press really nice from there and push the gear, the bearing and this other gear off at once and then we can swap that bearing out that way. All right, we're gonna do some redneck engineering here. So I need something to set this whole shaft on, on this plate. And I don't really have any super thick plate I can stick behind this thing to support it. So what I think I'm gonna do, I got this old brake drum here and the inner bore of that is pretty close to fitting over this back gear, but it's a little bit too small. So what I think I'm gonna do is just take cutoff wheel and cut around maybe about a quarter inch off of the inside of this and that'll open it up enough to be able to slide that drum over the back side and support this plate that's on here. Then we can throw it on the press on some blocks and I think that'll work pretty good. So let's cut this thing out and see if we can get this to work. All right guys, here is the setup. So we got six by six blocks here, quarter inch plate on top of that, my custom brake drum, and then a separator around the big gear here. So if all goes well, it'll press off the gear, the bearing, and this gear. All right guys, we got it apart. Safe to say that was a extremely tight press, but we got it. Um, I wanna go over one thing real quick with synchro. So 
The way these synchros work is it'll basically rotate on this taper. If you can see, this is tapered here and then the synchro is tapered as well. And it should slide nice and smooth on there. It should rotate smooth. But if you put pressure on it, it should lock up. And that's how a synchro works. It basically will match the RPM of that gear and then lock in once you actually engage the gear. So this tranny shifted really good. I'm not worried about these synchros. They look like they're in really good shape. They all, everyone that I've tested so far, locks right up, nice and smooth. So I'm gonna clean these up and just scotch bright this surface here just to get them freshened up. But I'm not gonna worry about replacing them because they are in great shape. And I've actually seen a lot of people replace them with an aftermarket set of synchros and the new ones they get are worse than the original ones. So I'm gonna leave the synchros. Like I said, I'm just gonna replace the bearings. All right, the last bearing we need to remove is the bearing on the end of this shaft here. It's got a snap ring on it. This one might be a little bit tricky just because I don't wanna pull off this whole gear. I wanna leave that on, but there's not much room to get behind the bearing. So I don't think this is a super tight press. So we're gonna mess around with it a little bit, see what we can do to get just the bearing off. There we go guys, bearing came right off. Not a very tight press at all. So very easy to remove that one. I was able to use this smaller separator to get just barely behind it, just to get it pushed off of the gear and then I cranked it down and it came right off with no issue. So now we just gotta wait for the new bearings to show up and we can start pressing this stuff back together. All right guys, all the bearings are ordered up. So it's just a matter of time before we get the bearings in and we can start putting the stuff back together. So I'm actually very surprised at how easy this tranny is to work on, how easy it came apart, and honestly how easy all the gears and bearings pressed off of the shafts. So like I said, I've never been into these trannies. I don't know what I'm doing, and I somehow figured it out, so it's not that complicated. Well, I'm gonna wrap this one up right here, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned as much as I did. Once we get the new bearings in, we'll get back out in the shop, get this thing back together, and hopefully we can get back together right. Well, go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.